This is a very strange pattern. What do you think this thing makes? Hmm, I wonder. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, January the 30th, 2023, and this is vlog number 301. Hard to believe that we're in the last couple of days of January. Where did the month go? And actually, I'm happy to see January go because, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, I've been feeling a little depressed lately, and it's the January blues. Comes every year. So I'm looking forward to February. I don't know why. I guess it's because it's not January. Okay, let's look at my current projects, shall we? So the first one, you have seen this in bits and pieces before, but now it is completely done. This is the one I called the Hidden Stars. It's the one that I started with the Sew Along with Stephanie um, that uh, did not go the way I wanted it to. However, I like it. Um, it this worked out to become something that's I think has a very modern look to it. Um, I like my color scheme. And yes, as I said once before when I showed this to you, if you really stare at it and study it, you can find the hidden stars that are in it. That's the reason why I call it hidden stars. It's all quilted. It is all bound. And tomorrow I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on Idiot Quilter about uh, my... Uh, selection of backing fabric, my selection of quilting design, and uh, any problems I may have had while I was quilting it. So that is done. And the other one that I completed, now this is one that I've told you about. It's called Stars of Wonder. You've seen it in bits and pieces. And it's the one that essentially I uh, was working on each time I went to one of those monthly sew days at the club uh, with Walter, with his sewing class. And um, yeah, it's all done now. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. Uh, I love the quilting I did in it. I did a uh, very large feather design across it. And that one little error that uh, I pointed out uh, some time ago, you can't even find it. In fact, Walter was hard pressed to find where that problem is. It is so minor. And of course, it's too late for me to take it out, but that's okay. No one, unless I point it out, is ever going to notice it. And as I said, it doesn't really upset the design or anything like that. So again, tomorrow on Idiot Quilter, I will be talking about this particular quilt in much more detail because I had some interesting things that happened along the way. Yeah. Okay. So that takes me to, let me switch over here. That takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. This one is, if you like nostalgia and you like sort of modern history, consumer history maybe you would call it, this one you might enjoy. It's called Retty for History. Retty, not ready, Retty. This week's YouTube of the week is for those of you that like to travel down memory lane. This is called Ready for History, a nostalgic channel, and I stumbled upon it, as I often do, by accident on YouTube. And it's got some really interesting things. And, you know, it's fun to look back on uh, what times were like uh, when we were a little bit younger, for those of us that are a little older, that is. For the younger ones, it might be interesting for them to check this out, to see things that are no longer in vogue or have become obsolete. See if they can guess what they are. So here are some examples of the kind of things they talk about. Uh, most popular home styles over the ages, odd jobs that no longer exist, things that have become obsolete since 2000, top Christmas toys from the 80s and the 90s, video stores that have gone forever, stores we love that no longer exist, uh, etc. There's all kinds of these different and very interesting uh, topics on here. And as I said, it's kind of fun to think back on, you know, days gone by uh, and about things that have disappeared from our lives. Um, the world has changed very rapidly. So if you're into nostalgia, then I suggest you check out Retty for History. So there's a link for Retty for History in the show notes below. You will find a link for my reoccurring link, actually, Zoom link for uh, when I'm 
here working away and I want some company, I have that turned on. Um, another thing too, I just realized, if you try to click into that Zoom link, it will send me a message, an email message, letting me know there's somebody uh, waiting to get in. Um, so I've been telling you, give me a minute or so, and if I'm here, I'll let you in. If I don't let you in within a minute, then I'm not here. Well, I'm going to change that to give me about five minutes. The reason being is this. My email system is set up to check my email every five minutes. So let's say you came on, you clicked on the link, and you're sitting there. Give me five minutes, because it may take five minutes for me to actually see that someone's waiting uh, for that. And if I'm available, I'll click on it. So just give me a little bit more time. You know, if you're working in your sewing room or whatever, your craft room, um, go ahead click on that link, go get yourself a coffee. By the time you come back, you'll probably know whether I'm here or not. I think that might be the best way to approach this. Um, I was on last week on Wednesday for a little while, um, but nobody else came. Maybe you're punishing me because I haven't been doing it this that often. And yeah, I get it. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, but I did discover this other feature that I didn't really think about before. So, so as I said, if you're working away on something, you want some company, click on the link. The link is always the same uh, for the Zoom. And uh, give it about five or six minutes. Because if I'm here and I know you're there, then I'll connect. Even if it is, it, even if it is just to say hi. For a minute or two with you uh, because maybe I've got something else that I'm doing and I'm not going to be there long. Either way, I don't want you to feel you're left out in the cold and I'm gaslighting you, okay? Because I'm not. <laughs> All right, so there's a link for that. There's a link for Craft and Chat. Yes, uh, February is coming very quickly and the first Wednesday of the month in February is February the 1st. So we will be having Craft and Chat as we always do on the first Wednesday of the month. All are welcome, whether you're a sewer, quilter, knitter, crocheter, crafter, paper crafter, scrapbooker, underwear drawer organizer. That's probably getting old now. I've used that line a lot. Um, yeah, please, please come along and join us. It starts at 1 p.m. my time, Eastern time. So you'd have to figure out what time it is in your zone. Um, but yeah, all are welcome. And if you've never done one of these before, don't worry. Everybody that comes on this, I mean, there I have my regulars, okay, which I very much appreciate. And every month that I have run this, we've had a few more people join us. And it's just fun. Everybody is very supportive. Everybody's very nice. I always learn something. Everybody else always learns something from it. And we get stuff done. So, you know, please, if, if you're really interested in it, don't be shy. There's nothing to be shy about. Okay. So that's this Wednesday, February the 1st, starting at 1 p.m. How long does it go? Usually, I used to say till 4 p.m., but lately we've been running to about 4.30, even sometimes slightly later than that. It depends on, uh, it just depends. Yeah. Okay. So um, there's also a link for Stephen and Walter Live. Uh, it, we talked about a whole lot of things, as we always do. And thank you. All of those of you who have not been scared away from Stephen and Walter Live, because sometimes, and this past Stephen and Walter Live was no exception, we get into some very controversial issues, and I do have some very strong opinions sometimes, and I don't want to offend anybody, but let's face it, you can please some of the people some of the time, blah, 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 right? Um, It is my channel. <laughs> what more can I say? My sandbox, my, to my toys, um, whatever. But uh, no, honestly, I don't want to put anybody off that's never come to it before. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, Walter and I are very honest and upfront about anything we talk about. Uh, do we know everything? No. <laughs> Maybe we come across like that, but no. And uh, yeah, we sometimes get into some controversial issues as well. But then doesn't that keep life interesting? And, uh, yeah, so if you want to know what I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit in my rant this week about uh, something we did discuss yesterday in that as well, um, my thoughts, and I have a feeling that it may rattle a few feathers, my opinions, but such is life, right? 
Um, so anyways, the link for Stephen Walter Live is in the show notes below. And there is a link to the latest, uh, well, last week's version of our episode of The Idiot Quilter. Okay, so that takes me to looking out my window. We've had an interesting uh, few days because we have had snow. Um, so yeah, it looks like winter now, as it should, uh, this time of the year. And so let me just show you what I'm talking about. So there, looking out my ring doorbell, is what our front of our house looks like, uh, shoveled. Um, yeah, we've got a fair amount of snow. Now, I know those of you that live out in uh, the west, of western part of Canada, or those in the northern part of Ontario, and that kind of thing, you're laughing. <laughs> you're going, that's snow? That's not snow. That's a dusting. But for us, it's snow. And so, but the roads have been kept clear. Uh, everybody seems to be doing their job this winter, which is kind of nice. Um, we always make the joke that you know the difference between our city and the city next door to us, where the boundary is, uh, according to how well the roads have been plowed. Usually, we're still buried. You just get into the next uh, town right next door to us, and bang, all the roads are nice and clear. But this way, this year, I have to say the city of Oshawa, where I live, is doing a pretty good job, I think. So they're right on it. And that guy with that little fun little snow plow that does the sidewalks has been ripping up and down the neighborhood as well. I think that would be a fun job, you know, whipping around the neighborhood in this little one man little thing on the sidewalks, you know, running over small people children dogs animals you know kind of a thing with it whatever I have a bit of a sadistic sense of humor don't i but um yeah so this is winter and there it is and we'll get sick of this really quick it's pretty it's kind of pretty right now you know with it on the trees and everything like that but we get over the prettiness very soon and start harking for spring which is a ways away Okay, before I depress myself any further with that thought, let's jump into what's pissing me off this week. Okay, nurses. Now, before I say anything further about this, let me say one thing. I admire anybody that is in the front lines of the healthcare system for a variety of reasons. The most obvious ones are they are there to help us if we are really sick. Okay? I think it takes a special person to be somebody that works in healthcare and is working with people who are miserable, who are not feeling well, who are sick, all that kind of stuff. I couldn't do it. No way. No. So I would really admire them for having that ability to, to give of themselves to other people. I also feel a great deal of sympathy for the frontline workers in the healthcare system in our province right here in Ontario because of the shit kicking that they've been receiving from our Ontario government who has absolutely no appreciation for what these people do. But they're a-holes. Not the people working in healthcare, the people running our province. They are big a-holes. There's no two ways about it. And they're trying to destroy our health care system. And part of that destruction is not hiring enough new qualified personnel in various aspects of the health care system. Okay, so I have said that. Now I'm going to tell you about a group of nurses I do not have any respect for. And those are the ones that during COVID insisted that they were not going to get the vaccines get the shot, the jab, to the point that they were given an ultimatum by their employer, the healthcare system employer. That said, basically, you have X amount of time to get yourself vaccinated or you no longer work for us. And these people still insisted, didn't believe they'd be fired. And they were, and rightly so. What is it that a nurse does in our system? They are looking after very sick people. They are exposing themselves to multiple diseases. Would it not, does it not behoove them not to protect themselves first so they can do their job? If they're sick, they can't be doing their job. And that causes a lot of stress on the healthcare system when you have a lot of nurses who may be out because they're sick. 
Also, they could be disease spreaders because they're coming into contact with all kinds of things and you don't know, well, you don't know and they probably don't know whether they have it either or they're a carrier, especially with COVID. So really, it is logical. It is very logical that they should be vaccinated to do their job. So why? Why would they turn around and say, I'm not getting it. You're violating my personal rights. Oh, I hate that when people go on about their personal rights. Get a life. Really, let's be real. Personal rights. If we all had and were able to, to sustain our own personal rights for things, we would have chaos in our society. We need to be controlled. We aren't that far out of the trees, really. We're animals. You know? We may think we're superior beings on the face of this planet, but we're really not. And we have a lot of stupid people. And a lot of it's the stupid people who are constantly complaining that their personal rights are being violated. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have like basic human rights and things like that. And we have fought through the centuries to come to that point that we're at in most civilized countries today. However, we still have controls, we still have laws, we still have rules that we need to follow because any successful society has controls built into it. Because as I said, we have a tendency to run amok. So these nurses now have decided that they are going to play on the crisis in our healthcare system in this province, which has been created by our government because they have another agenda, which we talked a little bit about yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live. And that agenda is to privatize everything and make money for the big, uh, for the big wigs uh, who are already rich. But that's a discussion for another day. But yes, right now we have a shortage of nurses, so we're told. Well, these people have all gotten together and they're saying, well, you can hire us back. We don't have jobs and we're qualified. Yes, you are, but you're still not vaccinated. And the hospitals are sticking to their ground about that. Thank goodness. They're saying, no, we told you, you would lose your job if you did not get vaccinated by a certain time. You had a choice. You made the choice. Your choice was that you would lose your job because you wouldn't get vaccinated. Now you're coming back to us. That rule is still in place. You want your job back? Get vaccinated. You have a job. It the ball's in your court. You make the decision. There are no shades of gray here. It is all very black and white. There's the rules. Follow the rules. Have a job. There are the rules. Don't follow the rules. Don't have a job. It's, onus is all upon those nurses to do this. What do they think? If they whine loud enough, about it and we'll go, oh, we're sorry, we need you now. No. There are plenty of people coming out of nursing school and things like that that need jobs. They're getting the shots. They're coming in. They're getting the jobs. So maybe you can find a, a job in the wonderful world of fast food. Whatever. But you made the choice. And this brings up all kinds of other issues. First of all, and I'll say it right up front, this particular set of nurses, not all nurses, and these ones are a minority. They really are. And isn't it always the minority that we hear the most about and that scream the loudest? They are a minority in the profession. Um, so they're stupid. They're just stupid. Now, if a nurse could not have the vaccine due to certain health complications. Well, basically the health complications they probably had that they could not have the vaccine for makes you question, um, should they even be working in healthcare then? If their immune system is that susceptible to everything, not really the place to be working, like working around with people who have uh, illnesses, but whatever. Um, but I support what the hospital has set as the rules and I don't care about these other yahoos because they are yahoos and I don't want them looking after me I mean if this is their mentality about vaccines what other mentality do they have when it comes to looking after sick people makes you wonder it really does 
So this might ruffle some feathers because everybody's got a healthcare story. Everybody has a story about being vaccinated by COVID or not being vaccinated and all that kind of stuff. And I'll be really quite upfront about it. Don't bother wasting your time writing me comments about that stuff because all of that kind of stuff has been done to death over the last few years, hasn't it? So we're tired of that. Okay. And I don't want any comments telling me that I don't know how, what it's like to be a nurse because I already know I know what it's not, what it's like to not be a nurse, but I know what it's like to deal with the healthcare system. When you have a sick parent or a parent in a nursing home or things like that. So yeah. And if we go back to personal rights and freedoms, I am entitled to my opinion. But I am not going to discuss it in the comment section of this YouTube. So take it for what it's worth. If this means that you're really pissed off with me and you want to stop subscribing to me, go ahead. That's your choice. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so ended the sermon. Uh, what are we moving on to? Oh, okay. Uh, product reviews. Anything new? Well, no, I have not bought anything new. Amazon's probably calling me up to find out if I'm still alive. Uh, because I haven't had an Amazon delivery for a bit. But that's all going to change very soon because today, actually, I'm getting some stuff. But I'll talk about that next week. But in the meantime, well, I did buy something new, but not directly. It was for Walter's birthday. Yes, it was Walter's birthday on Friday. More about that shortly. And I didn't have a clue what to get him. And I have been working on him for months. Well, not for months. Since Christmas, after Christmas. Because it was hard enough trying to buy him something for Christmas. Okay. Now his birthday comes at the end of January. Bang. What am I going to get him? Well, I did remember once that Walter said something about a dash cam for his car. And I thought, okay, there's an idea. So I went looking at them on Amazon. Oh my God. There are so many to choose from in a variety of price ranges. And I saw one, I read some reviews on it. It was in a price range that I thought was reasonable. I thought it might do the job and I almost clicked on add to my cart, but then I held back because I thought, you know, if I get this and it's, and Walter's very picky about his uh, electronics and if it's not right, then he's not going to be happy. I'm not going to be happy. We have to send it back and all that kind of stuff. So I said to him uh, a week before his birthday says, all right, I had an idea for your birthday, but I'm afraid to do it. Go ahead with it without your blessing. Would you like a dash cam? Now, I was prepared for him to say, because he usually does, uh, no, I'm not really. I thought at one time I'd like one, but I don't know about that. Okay. But he didn't. He said, hmm, actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I said, good. I'm running with it at this point. I'm saying, okay, this is what I did. This is what I searched out. This is one I thought would be okay. But why don't you research it? Because you know, Walter, he always researched everything to the finest degree. And I said, you see something you like, and that's the one you want to buy, buy it. Order it. I will pay for it. I don't care what it costs. Well, that's not true. But um, I sort of gave him a, a range kind of a thing. Um, so he did. And he ordered it and we tried it out. Actually, last night, uh, he installed it on the weekend, on Saturday, I think. But we tried it out last night on our way to and home from um, the restaurant we went to for his birthday. And uh, seems to work pretty good. And he seems to be happy with it. So that's a bonus. So I don't have to go through this for another year. But uh, yeah, so we've got a dash cam now. And... Um, I don't know how useful it's going to be, but it's kind of cool. And, you know, you never know. Um, like if someone, it has a feature on it, I guess, uh, that uh, if someone like in a parking lot comes near your car or, you know, comes in too close in a parking spot and kind of dents your doors or whatever, well, this will pick that up. Um, and other features on it too. And lately in our city, we've been having a whole raft of car thefts 
uh, these bold thieves just come right in at night, you know, at two o'clock in the morning or something, uh, and rip your car off. Now, they do have a certain type of car they want, and I don't think, well, I know for sure my car they'd never want, but mine's always in the garage because um, I hardly drive it. Uh, Walter's car, however, is might be a little bit more attractive, but it's got some age on it now, too, so I don't think it's one that they'd really want. But a little bit more assurance with this um, device in the car because it'll activate if somebody comes too close to the car, I think. That's how it works. I'm sure Walter will correct me on all of this. But uh, in my way of thinking right now, I think then if someone comes and tries to see if your car doors are unlocked or whatever, tampers with your car, this thing will pick them up. And maybe if they can see that there is a dash cam, because I'm sure these thieves uh, are looking for that kind of thing. I'm pretty sure that if they saw there was a dash cam in the car, this might act as a deterrent. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. We'll see. Well, I hope we don't see. You know what I mean? Um, so anyways, yeah. So that's the newest thing that I have purchased, but by way of Walter getting it. Okay. So that takes me to um, the grow light situation. As you know, we did purchase a, a second one. This is our original one. And you can see the little jungle is coming along nicely. Uh, we have uh, more herbs still coming up. Walter did a little bit of weeding out of some of the herbs that, uh, you know, he cut them back, put them in a bag, and we can use them and froze them, and they'll they'll be fine for cooking, that kind of thing. Um, I still like having fresh basil in a salad. I love that. And uh, you can see over there on the one end, there's some chives, and there, in between, there's some more lettuce. And we're discovering which variety of lettuce seem to grow the best in our situation under these lights. So that's what we're planting more of. So the second set of lights, as you can see, we've got lettuce there coming up very nicely. And those little plants over on the left hand side, those are tomato plants and peppers. Yes, I don't know if these are going to survive. Um, but I am surprised they're coming up this quickly because I think it said on the package that they they would take something like 60 to 80 days to germinate or whatever. Or maybe that was how long it takes them to grow to their full size. I don't know. The tomatoes are dwarf tomatoes. They're little like cherry tomatoes, but the plant is a dwarf plant. It's supposed to go grow from 12 to 18 inches high. Well, this thing, I think its maximum height is about 18 inches. So we'll see what happens with that. And with the peppers, we have no idea. These are just regular green peppers. Um, so we'll see over the next month what happens with these. Um, if anything, what we're thinking about with the peppers is pretty much doubt that we're actually going to get regular pe peppers under grow lights. But they get started and we can plant them in our container garden when we put that up come, you know, later in the year. So, and that's a ways away yet. But anyways, it's all an experiment. And we did plant some green onions as well. I have no idea what they will do. It's all an experiment. So I'll keep you informed. But I do like making a salad using some of this stuff that comes out of our own. I mean, it's organic, as they say. Well, there's no pesticides or anything like that. Um, there isn't even any kind of, well, there might be, a, I don't know if Walter puts a little miracle grow in the water or not. Maybe he does. I'll have to ask him about that. But essentially, you know, you can cut it and eat it. So it's nice. It's nice to have something fresh in the dead of winter, which is what we're in right now. Okay, so what else? Um, Let me go back here. So what about what's going on with my 3D printers? Well, I'm in a bit of a lull because I don't know what to make. I just fixed one of the printers. I had to put a new stepper motor on it. Had never done that before, but pretty easy. So with every part that I've replaced on any of these printers, I learned something more about how the printers function and how to maintain them. So that worked out okay. And uh, in the process of doing that, I did decide to make something and we have uh, a Keurig and an espresso, but our Keurig, well, someone gave us at Christmas time a couple of bags of really nice coffee, but it's regular coffee as in, you know, 
coffee ground up kind of a thing. And of course, Keurig, they're pre-measured out cups. But you can get reusable um, K-cups that fit in the machine and you can put your own coffee in them. In fact, you could put a little paper filter in these things because Walter ordered a bunch of these little paper filters um, from Amazon and you just drop them in the cup and put in your coffee and you can have whatever you, you want. And it's pretty easy to do. And we've got a pile of these little K-cup, uh, reusable K-cup things. And, you know, you rinse them out, you dump the grounds and everything, and then Walter refills them. But I thought, yeah, he's leaving the empty ones sitting all over uh, the top of our toaster oven kind of a thing uh, where we keep them. And, you know me, I, I like things to be organized. So I thought, I wonder if I can make just a little nice decorative basket with my 3D printer that'll hold these. Well, I went onto Thingiverse and I discovered that they have, and I'm going to show you the picture of it, they have a reusable K-cup holder, holder, or K reusable K-cup holder. So you can say, see the reusable ones, the pink and the black, and the holders are what they're in right now. Now, I figured Walter would poo -paw this idea, but he didn't. He says, wow, this is cool because it makes it really easy for refilling them because they're sitting right there. You put your little paper filter in, you put in your ground, you close the lid, away you go. So I made two of these um, and you can see them here. So this is what's called a practical print. Yes, there are things you can make that are practical. And uh, this worked out really, really well. So I was happy with that. Um, and I'm always happy when something makes Walter happy that I have made. Because believe me, <laughs> he'll know if he's not happy. Um, so, but I have also ordered um, something that's coming today for my 3D printers. And just let me see if I can find this. Here it is. I ordered, well, it's called an Ender 3 Direct Drive Upgrade Kit with 4240 Stepper Motor Hot End Kit 1.75 Millimeter Direct Drive Extruder Fan and Cable Support Flexible TPU Filament. What is this, you are going to say? Well, here is the little device here. This is the hot end for an ender. Now, this is the original ender. I have an original ender and I have an Ender 3 version 2. My two principal machines are version 2s. This is supposed to work with the original, and it looks exactly like the original, pretty much, with the exception of this little gizmo on the top. And this is the direct drive. Now, how does a 3D printer work? Well, you have your spool of filament and it's fed through something called a Bowden tube. And a Bowden tube is just a plastic tube that the filament goes through and it leads its way into the hot end. So this part, oops, this part down here. Um, there can be problems with that. Um, so this one printer that I have is the one that I was given as a gift way back. And I've been having some problems with it. It's not printing the way it's supposed to. I've done a lot of adjustments and whatnot. And I figured right now, what the heck? I bought this kit. I'm going to put it on that old printer and see if that makes a difference. Um, and if it does, and if I like the way this works, I might eventually upgrade my other two principal printers with direct drive um extruders i'll see was it expensive well you can see there's the price right there actually uh it's funny on amazon i didn't pay that for it i paid i think ten dollars less but suddenly when you come back to this the price has changed and you know you got to watch that on amazon if you buy the same thing over and over um don't just go uh, don't just click on the button that automatically uh buys it again check to make sure the price hasn't changed because this is a little trick amazon does you buy it once you come back you buy it again the price has increased i have found this on a lot of the products uh, that go here so yeah check that out so this is coming today um i'll probably install it maybe tomorrow and whatnot and we'll see how it goes from there yeah this may be a complete failure so i've lost 50 bucks uh, with it or it might be a complete success 
You don't know until you try. Okay, so that takes me to Blast from the Past Trips. We're getting pretty much to the end of this series that I've been running for quite a few months now, which was our trip in 2018 to um, Australia. And a lot of you have said you've really enjoyed these excerpts as well, seeing it. And so once this ends, which this could be the last one I'm going to show you this week. This is Sydney North, March the 6th, 2018, part two. And I don't know if there's any more after that for 2018. But I have other ones uh, from this was our third trip in 2018 to Australia. But I have ones from 2016 and 2017 as well. So we'll see. Uh, and those will show you other parts of Australia that weren't in this video. So we'll see what that's going on. I'm playing with looking up um, some of the trips we took a, a, quite a long time ago. But those ones are on CDs. And yeah, it was before the technology that we have today. So I don't know. Like our trip, trip to China, that was 2010. So I have to see what I can find and do. But in the meantime, here's Sydney North, part two. And this is a, an amusement park. It's been here since the 1930s, known as Luna Park. And there's one of these in Melbourne as well. thing. Oh, and I got a tea towel as well. Of course I did. For my quilt. You can arrange to have dinner on the Ferris wheel. I don't know what they give you. A sandwich and a can of Coke because less wind down here on this boardwalk so you can probably hear me now so as I said this behind or in front here is the tail end of Luna Park and there's the bridge and there's Walter taking a picture of the bridge probably the 50,000th picture yeah, yeah. of the bridge we have how many a lot more pictures of Sydney do we need? yeah well that's the thing we got like a hundred thousand of them a little harbor in oh, here as well busy. and by the way for any of you that were mentioning the fact that you hear wind in the videos if you have a suggestion how you won't hear it, let me know, because there's no way you can avoid it. Maybe if you get a one of those Bluetooth microphones eventually. Yeah. Maybe, if I ever find something like that, yeah. but you really can't avoid it. So you get also somebody drilling. Oh yeah, they'll probably get that in there too as well, so. So if the sound of the wind bothers you when you're watching the video, just mute it. You don't have to listen to it then. Best I can do, people. It's only a funny lane. Funny lane.
Okay, so we stopped here in North Sydney to have lunch, and guess what we're not having? If you said pizza, you're right. If you said schnitzel, you are right. What's the other third food group that they have here? Burgers. Guess what? We're having burgers. It's always we could have had a wrap, but... Oh, we could have had a wrap, yeah. Okay, so there was a fourth choice here that's rare. So, so we are in the Contemporary Art Gallery. And we were here last year, but things have changed. This reminds me of where they had that special show last year. Yeah, I don't know if it was this floor or it might have been. These are all plates stacked up. Now, if we were to take one right up in the middle, what would happen? So, at least in this section, not much has changed since last year. It's still the same stuff. So that was the art gallery, very short, very sweet, there wasn't much in there. They've got a couple installations that aren't open yet and everything else is stuff we'd seen before. This area is called The Rocks, it's places to eat, mainly down here and to shop. Another view of the city from a different point of view. So we have returned home and we stopped at a Belgian chocolate shop because Walter thought we should try a couple of donuts. So we did. We got this one is supposed to have Nutella in it. And this one, what's that? Is that supposed Salsa to be? Salsa caramel. Yeah, I thought they were bigger. Yeah, I thought I thought they were the ones over no, they're the, the icing. Ones that... the, the cinnamon swirls. No, they're, that's the cinnamon swirls. Oh. Well, anyways. So, these little donuts cost $6.50 a piece. Now, we haven't tried them yet. Walter's just cut one in half, the Nutella one. I'm poking it. You see, I'm poking it. This hard. is hard as rock, and it doesn't, it, I have a feeling, yeah, it's, it's Tim Hortons are a lot better. Well, it's like a lump of bread with some kind of chocolate on it. Mm -hmm. Really. First thing we should have realized was, Oliver Brown Belgian chocolate. When we get in there, they're all Asians. I'm sorry, but in, Asians do not know anything about sweet desserts. They always look nice, but any that I've ever had are not that great. However, live and learn. So, $13 for two donuts. Yay! Okay, so Walter had a theory that maybe if he heated them up in the microwave, they'd be better. Well, the chocolate one was better. This one is good. He says the chocolate one was better, but this one isn't much and that takes me to events in the past week. Well, um, you know that last week we had a celebration of life to attend. We int attended that electronically. It was uh, put on a YouTube live. Um, so we were there for that for a friend of ours that had passed away because of a brain bleed, basically. And uh, we had his partner over for dinner on Friday night which also happened to be Walter's actual birthday on Friday night. And uh, we just, you know, he's going through a difficult time. He had been with this other fellow for 17 years. And uh, yeah, you know, when you lose your spouse kind of a thing, um, it's hard. It's very hard. So, you know, we thought we'd have him over for dinner and just, you know, entertain and have a nice dinner and talk and everything there and let them know that you know we're friends we're here for you and whatever so we had a very enjoyable evening uh with him so that was nice then on the saturday we had to go to another celebration of life event another one of our friends just before christmas passed away he had cancer and uh that was very emotional 
uh, for all concerned. Uh, wonderful person, you know, it's always the wonderful people, you know, like they say, the die, the good die young kind of a thing. Um, they had a, a sort of a, a reception with food and coffee and things like that. And then members of the family and his spouse, surviving spouse, uh, got up and spoke. And that was the emotional part of it all. So, yeah, that's kind of, you know, seems like uh, every other week we're going to a celebration of life. And we're going to another celebration of life next Saturday night. It's actually for the same fellow. Um, but this is uh, being held at our local gay club um, in remembrance of him because he did a lot for the LGBTQ community. Um, so, you know, they're having this celebration of life and they're having sort of a party, more or less. It's a dance night because this is something he had always said that he wanted uh, to have a dance party kind of a thing. So the club is honoring his wishes. So we are going to that for a little while um, next Saturday night. And um, we also have we uh, also went out for dinner last night. Um, after Stephen Walter Live, I had reservations at the Keg. The Keg is a steakhouse. It's one of our favorite restaurants here. And so we went, we had a very nice dinner uh, last night. Um, I got my escargot. I was talking about that yesterday at Stephen Walter Live. I love escargot. And I especially love uh, the way they prepare it at the Keg. Um, so we both had that. And we had, uh, we actually had prime rib because we had steak on Friday night. So, you know. And we still have steak left over. So I think tonight we're having fajitas uh, with the leftover steak. So we had prime rib. And it was all very, very nice. Um, that was, I took Walter out for his birthday for that. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Okay, what's coming up? Well, you know about Craft and Chat. Already talked about that. That's on Wednesday this week, um, February the 1st. Um, we have for us, Walter and I on next Saturday, besides the celebration of life event at the club, we're also going to be at the club during the day because it is a sew day with Walter's sewing class. So I have to figure out what I'm going to take to work because I showed you that quilt. It's all done that I had been working on at that. So I have to have another project. Well, it's not like I don't have other projects to do because I do. So I have to get that sorted out at some point this week before that happens. And of course, this coming Wednesday, we have session four of the So Along with Stephanie and myself. Um, and we've got a lot of people following that. And I'm not sure this won't be our very last one, but we're pretty much coming to the end of that project as far as getting the top together. Um, it's gone by a little faster than we thought, uh, which is fine. So yeah, so if you're um, uh, following that, don't forget it's at nine o'clock Eastern time. Um, on my channel uh, and it's live and if you can't catch it then well uh, it'll be rebroadcast -bro for you as well okay so I think that's all that's coming up in the next week so I have things to do as well today so I guess I better get going to them and I hope you have a really great week and we'll see you next week and don't forget to tune in to the idiot quilter this week and also one thing I did forget to mention to you I did an interview uh, in the past week, and that interview goes up uh, on my channel uh, tomorrow morning. So you'll be able to catch that, and it's a really great interview. That The person that I interviewed, well, she's fun. A lot of fun. So be sure to check that out as well. And we may have a So Chatty at the end of this week. We didn't have one last week. It was Walter's birthday. Uh, his sister dropped in during the day, but we didn't really have a topic. So I'm looking for topics for So Chatty. So please, if you've got some ideas, jot them down. Send them to me as email or put them in the comments section of any of my videos. Uh, please, 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 please. Because I'm not sure what we're going to talk about at So Chatty. We're exhausting all the topics. There's got to be other ones out there. Okay, now I'm just rambling. So I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye. See you next week. Me again. I thought I was done. I forgot something. I gave you a teaser at the very beginning of today's vlog and I didn't explain what that was. And I'm not going to explain it to you now. Tune into the Idiot Quilter tomorrow to find out what that's all about. Goodbye for real this time.